Hey guys, during this introduction, go grab a piece of paper and a pen because I'd like to do a game with you, a riddle, and it's a way that you can use with your students to teach them various forms of English without teaching them English. Let's go. Hey there, English teachers. Jesse here from Sweet Academy, and I want to help you in the classroom. And I want to help you have engaging lessons and use really give you some lesson ideas that I think that your students are really going to love. And well, my students have really loved doing these. And one of the best ways to teach students English is to not make it seem like you're teaching them English. So I want to try a riddle with you. We all like riddles, right? Figuring things out. And I'm going to do it here on the screen. But it's something that in the classroom I do on the whiteboard. So you can have a, or the chalkboard, because some of my schools are, you know, have a chalkboard. But uh, I'd like to do this riddle and I'd like to do it with you. And along the way, I'm also gonna teach you how I teach language and extend this throughout a class. So, First, I draw these two forms of circles. I don't do exact circles. I kind of do this abstract shape, right? And I draw two, and I kind of get their attention, right? And I say, use your imagination. What are these? And so I'll ask you, what are these? <laughs> and a lot of the time they'll say, I don't know. Or sometimes they'll say like a fried egg or something like that. And but. Then I draw a boat right in the middle, like a hand-drawn boat. My drawing is terrible, but I draw a boat. And then they'll say maybe island or Eastland or Iceland. And that is the first moment that you can teach them the pronunciation. In island, we don't say the S, so it's island. So I draw island one and island two. And then... By this time, as some of you, um, some of them will say, oh, this, but they won't really remember what it is. So don't let that distract you. That's the first distraction you're going to have to fight with. Well, maybe the second after getting them to look at the board. But just let them say that and think that and tell them, okay, relax, relax. And then I'm going to draw, I'm going to write the words. You can draw it if you can draw. I can't draw, so I don't. A fox a chicken and a bag of chicken food. A fox, a chicken, and a bag of chicken food on island one. And this is another place to teach the difference between chicken food and chicken as food, right? You'll need to mention that because a lot of students will think it's like fried up chicken. This will be important, an important distinction in this riddle. Okay, so we have a fox, a chicken, and a bag of chicken food. And then, I explain the riddle. And the riddle is I have three, these three things on island one. The objective, the goal is to get all three things on island two. But the problem is your boat is very small and you can only take one item at a time. So then you'd have to teach the word take for, you know, more lower level classes, right? You'd have to take from island one one at a time from island one to island two. That's the objective. But what's the problem? The problem is if you leave the chicken and the fox together, the fox will eat the chicken. If you leave the chicken with the bag of chicken food, the chicken will eat the chicken food. So um, how are you gonna get all three items from island one to island two? So then, here comes the main language lesson. The main language lesson goes with them teaching them like uh, sequence adverbs, right? So first, first you have to, and this is what I write on the board, especially for like B1, beginner, lower intermediate classes, I write it on the board. First you have to, dot, dot, dot. First you have to take the blah, 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 and let them start figuring it out and working it out. So then you're teaching these sequence adverbs. First, you have to da da da. And then I write then, comma, next, comma, after that, comma, finally, 
comma. So I'm writing these on the board. This does two things. It teaches them this order as they're working it out. You're having them like repeat, repeat these because they'll say, first you have to take the bag of food. And then I say, okay, good. Now the fox ate the chicken. And then they'll have to start over. First you have to take the fox. Great. Then the chicken eats the chicken food. And they're repeating this every time and they don't even realize it. So that's the beauty of it. And meanwhile, they're thinking of this riddle. They're thinking of the solution to this riddle and they're using it hopefully a little bit in English. You know, some might go into their native language because they're really thinking of the, the language instead of, or they're thinking of the answer instead of the language, okay? But just keep reminding them about the correct expressions to say. Well, first you, I write, I draw an arrow, go back. So it teaches them the language, but it also on a deeper level, it gives them the ability, more ability to solve it. Because if you, a lot of, some of your students will say, um, I don't know, I don't know, it's impossible. It's not impossible. People have done it all the time. So it's not impossible, I know the answer, right? But uh, they'll say it's impossible because they're just, they don't wanna try because they think they can't get it. And then you focus on the language. First you have to take, and then encourage them to start. And then they'll say, first you have to take, and then some of them will figure it out. And they'll say, the chicken. Because doing it in another language, and just watch them. Watch them try to figure it out and how it'll come to some of them as they're, uh, as they're thinking in English, right? Because they're thinking of more the language. So they're thinking more rationally. Remember in a recent podcast, I said, if you listen to the More Than English podcast, I said that we make more rational decisions um, in another language. So if you have to make a big decision, if you're faced with a big decision to start a new job or to buy a new house, try thinking it in a different language if you know that and tell, pass this along to your students. It's beautiful. So they'll start figuring it out and working it out and you're teaching them the language, but more importantly, you're teaching them how to solve the puzzle. And then if your students haven't got it yet, then give them a hint. And the hint is under go back, right? Take back. Most of them will get it then. And, uh, and that's how they solve it. So if you haven't figured it out yet, or if you haven't thought about it, then put the video on pause because I'm going to go over the actual answer. But if you have figured it out or, or whatever, continue here. So why don't you say it with me as you see it on the screen too? And I do this all on the whiteboard, as I said before. So I'd have it all behind me on the whiteboard. And we work on it together and they say it together with me. So why don't you do it with me? So first you have to take the chicken to island two. And then you return to island one or you go back to island one and you get or you pick up if you want to add that in your lesson to for more advanced classes. There's always some place to go. There's always something more to teach. So you, this lesson is great for from beginners to as advanced as you want to go. So go back to island one and pick up or take take the chicken food to island two and you pick up the chicken and you take the chicken back to island one you pick up the fox take the fox to island two and then you go back and you get the chicken and of course it also works if you take the chicken go back take the fox pick up the chicken go back to island one and then do it in that order too so Either of these work, but the trick is you have to take the first one back and that way none of them are with the ones that they would eat. So this is the lesson that you could use with your students, with your next speaking lesson, one-on-one -on -one lesson, uh, classroom, even writing, grammar. If you're teaching these sequence adverbs, it's a perfect thing. Um, it's great. It's fun. It's fantastic. They'll probably ask you to do another one and then you say, I don't have one right now. 
I'll think of one later and I'll give you another one. But uh, anyway, so thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me. If you like this lesson even a little bit, then click that like button. And if you want more lessons and help in the classroom, classroom ideas, classroom management, I have one on how to have good parent meetings, you know, meet with parents, which can be scary. I have a lesson on that I'll put up in the corner. So if you like that idea and you need something like this, then hit that subscribe button and the bell and you'll get notified of lessons and ideas each week. Sounds great, right? So keep teaching and keep learning. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.